G'day, I'm Tim Thompson. This week I'm getting to play around with a brand new set of wire strainers that I think are possibly some of the best on the market. Let's have a look at how they work, go through a few of the features and give them a try. They look the goods. Those of you that are familiar with my past videos on Wireman products probably remember Jack the Gripper. These fantastic little grippers hang on to wire like there's no tomorrow and are easier to set. Well now, they've teamed them up with a set of lever strainers that get rid of a lot of the problems that old lever strainers had in terms of ease of use and bring in a number of safety features. Let's give them a try. Alright, so let's go over what you get in the bag from end to end. We start out with, on the straining assembly itself, a Jack the Gripper. Now this Jack the Gripper is well known now in the industry for being very soft on wire, being very easy to place and being incredibly strong. Because there are no grooves in the Jack the Gripper for the wire to sit in, it can take woven wire like barbed wire or cable just as easily as it can smooth plain wire. And because you've only got a single cam that's guided by two pins, the wire's not compressed at all. So you don't end up with that cutting action that you can in really heavy strain applications in some strainers. So this is a really good mechanism and also super easy to put on and take off the wire. It's just a case of placing it. When we come down to the next section, you've got the next bit of ingenuity. It's often the case that people keep a separate set of strainers for straining sheet mesh and using strainer plates or boards than they do using plain wire. Well, this set of strainers gets around that by having a simple screw connection that allows you to take the jack the gripper off and use the supplied hook to fit straight to your strainer boards. Moving down, we've also got our die spring scale, so you can get your wire tension exactly right. With a set of modern strainers with the extra long handle, it is easier than ever to overstrain your wire. And while you might think that putting a bit extra strain on your wire is a good thing, it's like over tightening a bolt, you're actually stretching the metal. Wire shouldn't generally be taken past about one third of its breaking strength. So regard the wire manufacturer's instructions for strain strength and stick to them. And you've got the three most common strain strengths on this die spring. So your fence wire won't break over time, particularly if you're in frost prone areas. Coming down a little bit further, we've got these malls. Now we have seen similar malls to this before. I really like these. They've got actually a very soft spring. Now that might not be to everyone's liking. You do with a slack chain, sometimes have to guide them on a little bit with your hand. But once you get some tension in there, they guide themselves on the, on the chain very, very easily and they're an absolute breeze just to flick off. Coming down further, you get an extra long chain. Now this chain is several meters in length, so it's going to be perfect for using with strainer boards. There's a little bit more chain than you need for straining plain wire applications, particularly on fence lines, but you get around that with a really simple hack of using a little dilly bag or work bag in front of you and putting the extra chain in there. You don't want to leave that lying on the ground. Very easy to use with that quick hack. Moving down, you've then got another replaceable, removable set of Jack the Grippers. That brings me to another really important point. There are a lot of swivels in these strain walkers. We've got one here. We've got a swivel at the start and at the end of the actual strain gauge. Then we've got another swivel before you get to the gripper. Having all these swivels is a real advantage, particularly if you're working in tight situations or crowded situations, like I was working at a raspberry farm during this review. All of the swivels meant I could position every part of the strainers exactly how I wanted it and not break off foliage or vegetation. That's an absolute winner for people that are working in vineyards, raspberries and orchards. Oh, did I mention these things are pretty strong? They take me back to my childhood. Whee! Now let's go and try these things out in a few different situations. First job for the strain walkers was replacing some old wire joiners that had started to fail in a raspberry patch. Adding to the problems were the fact that the old style strainers were having trouble sticking on the two mil wire. 
into the strain walkers. They not only jumped onto the wire easily, but they stuck and did the job properly. Having all the swivels in these strainers makes them super easy to work against existing trellis with. Uh, if you're thinking of a difficult job, I think tightening up wires in a row of raspberries that have already bud burst and you can knock the fruit off for the year, <laughs> it probably sums up degree of difficulty. So having these swivels here allows me to set my work platform up perfectly. I love the amount of adjustability in these. All right, let's quickly tighten up the wire and get on with the next project. Taking the strain walkers off the wire once you've tightened it up is really, really easy. It's exactly the same if anyone's ever been used to Haze 108s or any of the other sorts of strainers, except all you have to do is simply grab the gripper and they fall straight off the wire. There's no having to knock them off with a hammer or having them stuck on bent and damaged wire anymore. They just come off in your hand and like butter. Just pack it back up and I'm ready to go to the next wire. You don't want to have your chain dragging on the ground as you work. It slows you down. Invest in a good dilly bag like this stockade model. Next up, I tried them out with some high tensile barbed wire that I was running out in a sheep paddock. And I was keen to see how the new grippers performed with woven wire. On this occasion, I decided to strain up to the end post as you often do with barbed wire. The hook on the other end of the extra long strain walker chain was That's easy it. to use and quite positive in its grip on the chain. Engaging the strain walkers on the chain was really easy and as soon as you got them going, you could take your hands off and they pretty much directed themselves, even past the top rail, which I deliberately tried to put in their way to see if they could cope with it. A quick termination not later, and the job was done. Removing the strainers off the high tensile barbed wire that I was using, I noticed that critically they left no damage behind and barely even a kink in the wire. No sign of scuffing at all. Okay, now let's see how these things go with sheep mesh. I've got some stiff stay that I'm going to run out on a fence stay end assembly and do a gut strain using two different types of strainer boards. So we're giving them a thorough workout. Safety on, let's get into it. Now technically the stiff stay fence doesn't need a top and bottom save wire because it does come with a high tensile top and bottom already. But I've run out a wire at the top just so that I can clip the fence to it loosely using the Jambro clipper and that keeps the mesh up off the ground and lets me get a more even and easier strain rather than dragging it through the grass. Now Lachlan Robbins, one of my viewers, was asking what a gut strain was. Well that's what I'm doing today. I'm going to use two strainer plates, one on each side of a gap halfway down a fence because we've got a reasonably long one that we're straining up today. So where I ran out of the roll, I've simply gone to the other end of the fence, run that roll up, I've got a gap in the middle. We'll strain to that gap and close it up with crimps. We need two strainer plates to do that job. So I'm going to use the wire man strainer plates on one end and I'm going to use the whites contractor strainers on the other. Connecting the other strainer plate to the other end of the strainers is really easy with the Strain Walker Pros because all you have to do is remove the jack the gripper, use the hook and connect straight to the hook on the strainer plate. Couldn't be easy to use. Once again, the number of swivels in these strainers means that it's never trying to pop off the chain. And when you're using a plate or something that's immobile, having these swivels is really important. I'll just do the bottom now. One thing I would definitely suggest 
if you're thinking of ever using your strainers with sheet mesh is make sure you buy a brand of strainers that comes with a long chain because there's a lot of flex in sheet mesh. It's really important obviously when you're setting up to put your crimps on that there is overlap in your line wires. Make sure you don't cut it in the wrong spot because it's really hard to glue wire back together. Then get a really good little pair of snips like these Nipex cutters and give yourself a little bit of overlap to work with in your two fences. Be careful you keep track of where you're cutting. Now I'd have to say that crimping wire is right up there for me along with things like going to the dentist to get my tooth drilled. It's horrible but crimps are really strong and they don't take up much room so they're ideal for this kind of mesh. Uh, much stronger than knots or other joiners that will fit in this space. But they're not fun. Once you get the little buggers started, it's a lot easier. And of course, the sign of a good set of strainers is that when the job's done, they're super easy to remove. It's like any job, fencing is so much easier when you use the right tools, materials and equipment. The Wireman strain walkers, they're a pretty good piece of kit and if you were looking for one set of strainers that does everything and does it well and does it safely, these might well be the ones that go into your kit. Guys, if you like this video, don't forget hit the little subscribe button down there, give it a thumbs up and there's plenty more content and links to reviewed products on timthompson.ag. See you next time.